The November 7th Kibra by-election is now being viewed by many as just more than about Kibra. Political pundits liken it to the first duel between the handshake sympathizers and handshake detractors. A duel between the Deputy President and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. And in the Jubilee Party, a duel between the so-called Tanga Tanga and Kelewake factions. A race that has again brought to the fore the divisions in the Jubilee Party with one side openly supporting the ODM candidate and referring to him as the handshake candidate. The Party Secretary General, Rafael Tuju, is our guest on Newsnight. Thank you so much Thank you. Uh, for making time for us tonight. Honorable Tuju, that very, I mean, this is given, now that you're the Jubilee Party Secretary General. McDonald Mariga is your preferred candidate. Not just preferred, he is, is your our candidate. candidate for the Kibera by election. And that is not in doubt. I just haven't seen you campaigning for him yet. Well, there have been so many other by-elections. I've not been to any of them. Mm -hmm. If anybody insists that they want to see me in Kibera, I would consider it uh, ethnic profiling. <laughs> okay, you wouldn't want to... Are we going to see you campaigning for him at some point? Well, I've already campaigned for him. The other day I was with him at State House uh, when he was being received by the by president. president I, I, I personally, with something which I don't normally do, I personally gave him the certificate, uh -huh. um, the clearance certificate for the party. And um, I'll do what I normally would do with other candidates. Uh, sometimes we give some financial assistance and he'll be benefiting from that financial assistance from the party as we do with all, with, with all others. Uh, whether I, and I have a team from the party who are helping in, in Kibra. Uh, whether it's, I, I decide to go to the field or not, uh, that's neither here nor there because I've not gone to any of the other by-elections in which Jubilee has participated. I don't remember the last by-election you participated, by the way. Yes. And, and I'll, I'm going to, um, I mean, at the Jubilee party. I'll look at that later, that question will come later. But first, Honorable Commander says uh, that the heart and mind of the president are with ODM candidate Imran Okoth. I mean, you're close to the president. Is that, is that where the president's heart and mind is? Well, I wish I could know the president's heart and mind. I know what he has done. He mm -hmm. has received Marega officially at State House. Mm -hmm. He actually hearted him on mm -hmm. behalf of Jubilee Party. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's a much more fundamental issue here, a much more philosophical issue that we could address. Um, in fact, according to the Political Parties Act, when any party member actually goes against the wishes of uh, their party and probably campaigns for another party, that's enough ground for that particular member to be expelled from the party. But when you look at our Kenyan political scenario, you may talk about Kamanda in uh, in Jubilee and Party. And many more. And, you can, and many more. You can talk about Jumwa from, uh, ODM. Uh, from ODM and yeah. you can talk about Toyotsi from ANC. Yeah. Um, this is uh, some kind of conflict within our political establishment. In fact, I wish I could interview you tonight because this is your last night, so I'm told. <laughs> no, it's not my last night. <laughs> okay. But, but, you know, can you give Silly me... At the end of, till the end of October. But can you, but, give, me, can you give me one um, ideological or policy position that you know which differentiates Jubilee from WIPA, from ODM, or from ANC? You don't think there's any? No. Can you give me one? You are an enlightened Kenyan. Can you one give me one ideological that you know? position? Ideological between, position okay. or ideological or policy position, position that you know that differentiates any of those four parties? None that is very clear. The none is very, very clear. That's but, precisely the problem. What is clear is the ethnic basis of those parties. If you, I asked you which are the ethnic basis of those parties, okay. you'll not have to, to so second guess. So you're indicting yes. your party, in other words? I'm not indicting our party. I'm pointing not at a problem. And I'm pointing at a problem which is in our political space. Okay. And indeed, if you, if, if, you know, scholars talk about this, and I'm actually having a, a public lecture tomorrow at Destin University, and it's one of the things I'm talking about, what psychologists call uh, uh, cognitive uh, dissonance, where what people having to reconcile their ethnic uh, loyalties and, and, and uh, ethnic uh, loyalties and, 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 and positions vis-a-vis -vis loyalty to the Kenyan nation. Those are challenges that we are facing. That's fine. You're still the Secretary General of the Jubilee Party. Yes. First, you're indicting your party. You're saying it's, it's just like in mm. more, uh, the other parties in Kenya. No. Their grounds, I mean, it's ethnically based and all that. We are working on that. You're working on that. And that's the challenge. I thought that's have. what and you were working on, and that's why you came up with the yes, Jubilee Party. Yes, and, and it's still work in progress. I think you've heard some people say that I should ship out and go to ODM because I'm lure. You've heard some people say that I have no business being in Jubilee Party. 
and this has tended to come from certain tribal leaders. Okay. Let's so go. those are challenges that we have, and I think it is good to be honest about them. Fair enough. Let's go back to the issue. I was talking about what Honorable Maina Commander said, and you said that you, we oh. saw McDonald Mariga with the president at State House, and you were there actually yes, I was. that time. You know, uh, Honorable Commander went on to actually say that he was sneaked into State House, and that is not all. Let's, let's listen to what Honorable Shebesh said uh, uh, about this. Thank you. Kwa siku mnasikia kuweka kofia, mimi nilikuwa status. Mimi nilikuwa status kwa zingine na CS. Mimi najua namna ambao waliingia hiyo status na mlango ya nyuma. Mimi najua vile waliweka pressure. Ya hiyo picha mliona. Nauliza na nyinyi mnajua boss wetu wako na voice, si ndio? Si huru wako na voice? Kuna mali aliongea ama nipita? Nipita. Wakati wa Kibra mkumbuke kitu moja. Nyinyi ndio mnafaa kufurahia handshake kushinda watu wengine. How do you explain that? Well, um Sneaked into State House, I want to tell you that I've served two presidents, President uh, Mwai Kibaki and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta at this particular moment uh, on time. If I had a way of knowing how to sneak into the State House, I'd do it. And I think many other Kenyans would want to know how to sneak into State House. It's not possible. Were well, you the one who took Mariga to State House? Unless you're the party secretary general. Yes, I was there. You're the one who took him to State yes. House. So there's nothing like sneaking into State House. And uh, what Honorable Shebesh is saying that we should have had the president say something and the president said nothing. Um, the president did what did say, the president say that day? Well, he, he hearted uh, Mariga, he pledged his uh, total support to the candidate, and he spoke. Now, if um, this was not in the footage that was available to the media, uh, that is something which often happens. You may see pictures and you don't hear so voices, he, and that's an an, an, probably an editing situation. But what I can tell you that all Kenyans, if they knew a way of sneaking people into State House, <laughs> <laughs> Even if so I knew a way of sneaking into State House, I would, I would and he's probably... Support, he's supporting McDonald Mariga. Yes. Of course, okay. And we actually, and, saw, and we actually saw an article from the uh, President's Press uh, saying actually the same. Yes. However, I mean, your candidate is McDonald Mariga, yet you allow uh, your party members to go ahead and support the ODM candidate. Well, this is the cognitive uh, dissonance that I was talking about, and I'm, as I told you, I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. We, we're getting a lot of... Uh, challenges and uh, conflict in this political space because people are, are even misunderstanding what this uh, handshake is all about. Uh, it is something that uh, has come up before. I've had to explain it several times to Kenyans and to members of, of the party. Uh, why are we having the handshake? Now, I can give one simple example. In the whole world, foreign direct investments does not go to a country where there's tribal infl uh, conflict, where there are riots in the streets, where uh, people are not certain of uh, political stability. In fact, Kenya scores very well in other indices of development and uh, the, we're doing the right things. We are number two in the world, for example, from athletics. But when it comes to political predictability, we are performing worse than Uganda, worse than Rwanda, worse than Tanzania. Okay. In fact, we are one, number 170 out of 195 uh, countries. So it is important that we bring political temperatures down so that foreign direct investment can, can come, so that tourism can grow. That's fine. And, I mean, and that, has happened, I don't that has happened since the handshake. Yeah, that yeah. has happened the since the handshake. The economy is not doing very well. No, it's not doing you, well. You know that for a fact. Well, and, and that is because of a, a combination of other factors. But it would be worse if we didn't have that handshake. Okay, so why are you allowing your party members to support the ODM candidate? They're not allowed. They're not allowed, but I'm the secretary. They are doing I, it. As secretary general of the party, we are exercising a lot of tolerance. If you saw, um, if you saw the number of complaints I've had from about Murkomen, about Sudi, I mean, you Regarding what, Kibra? Uh, not regarding Kibra, regarding other issues, okay. like on the Mao, like on, on and our own dam. And we have not them. taken action against them because we feel that it is important that we are, our party is in its embryonic stages. And the whole country, really, in terms of democracy, is in its embryonic stages. Okay. And there's a lot of give and this take. This is that a very clear, give. I mean, fair enough with, with your response. This is a very clear thing. This is a Jubilee Party members going to Kibra supporting the ODM candidate. That is indiscipline. Yes. And you're doing nothing about it as a party secretary general? Well, uh, one thing which I can tell you for sure is that um, I would pronounce myself on this very, very clearly, but only after a neck decision. I may have my personal uh, 
Which is what? views towards that. And, and I'm not in the business of giving my personal <laughs> views okay. because, because as a Secretary General of the party, yeah. I articulate the position of the party. So and at this particular moment and time, uh, as I've told you, we've mm -hmm. had several disciplinary issues against uh, those who've talking, uh, talk, talked out of turn. You're the one against the president yeah. on issues like the Aror Dam, like Kemarer Dam, yeah. like Mao. Uh, in this particular case, on Mariga. Okay. Now, if we were to take action on virtually everybody, I think that there will be a lot of people who will be out of the party. Does and that matter it or is, is discipline most important um, for you? Well, um, we do have a challenge, especially because of what I've just explained to you, to you earlier, cognitive dissonance. They are not understanding exactly what is going on sometimes. The, if the president shakes hands with uh, Honorable Raila, what is wrong with them shaking hands with the people from their other okay, party? Okay. So this is, this, this is a challenge that you're facing. You're the one who quoted the law, Political Parties Act. You know, a political, uh, when you're talking about uh, a member of a political party who promotes the ideology, interests, or policies of another political party, um, the law that says I'll be deemed to have resigned from the previous political party. That is an avenue you can pursue. Yes. You haven't chosen to do it. We haven't. Because I don't understand parties, what is so difficult to understand if somebody, I what is there to understand in supporting a member, uh, somebody who's not from your party? I can explain that to you. We can take that avenue. But first of all, we'll only take that avenue after a neck. I cannot take it as Rafael Tuju. That's number one. At this particular moment in time, we have not seen it necessary to take that because we do have a lot of uh, issues of that type. And this is something which is not only a problem to Jubilee Party is a problem to other parties. But you, and yeah. I can tell you, yeah. other parties have taken action and the courts have ruled differently. Fine, but you know, you these, are, the these, are, these are challenges okay. in the political space that you some of them have to be dealt with within the context of parliament, maybe new legislation. Uh, we knew new things in the new, new, new amendments in the Political Parties Act so that we can deal with this. Because I can tell you that if, we, if, 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 we, if I was to spend my time just dealing with that, uh, then we'll only be dealing with discipline Again, issues okay. rather than building some very important <laughs> issues, some very important things in the party okay. that I'm, How I'm, important? I'm, more than, uh, I'm more than ready to talk about. How important is campaigning to you? Do you believe campaigning can actually win your seat? In what respect? For you? example, in Kibra, do you believe if Jubilee campaigns well, uh, they will win that seat? Not it's about how you campaign. No. Isn't it? No, no, of course not. Okay. I mean, in politics, um, there are several other variables that you put into consideration. And that is true in Kenya, as it is in any other democracy. If you're in. If say, Jubilee was not to campaign in Kibra, you wouldn't mind? Well, we are campaigning in Kibra. But I'm we asking you a question how important is those, are those campaigns for you? Campaigns are important, so, but does not necessarily result in a win. So my question because is... Because there are some other variables that uh, you have to put, to put in consideration. Okay. I mean, for example, even, even say in the United States, there are certain states which are Republican. It doesn't matter how hard the Democrats campaign in those areas, it yeah. is unlikely for them to win. But they still go ahead and campaign because you have to claim new territory. How important is it? You would want to win indefinitely in, in, in Kibra, isn't it? I think, we're very com I think we're very competitive in Kibra. Fine. Uh, we so do have a chance. If we didn't think so, we'd not put up a candidate. So isn't it not uh, shooting yourself in the foot when you're allowing MPs to support another candidate? You're fast, you're confusing we are not, we are uh, your supporters. We haven't seen you raise concerns. You're, you're the party secretary general. No. The official that will position. actually go against what you're looking yes. for. The seat the, that you're looking for. The official position is that we have a candidate and our members of parliament and our members should support our candidate. Um, but when a member of parliament comes out and says, look, this is not the jubilee position. This is my personal position, all right? Okay. As I've, said, I've yeah. seen them do. Yeah. Then it is up to the party to sit and decide whether um, they'll take disciplinary action against those specific members or not. When do you and think you can sit to do this? I mean, you're talking about a neck until there's a neck. Well, the, the neck will have to decide on that, and that can be convened at any time within 24 hours if you think there's an emergency. <laughs> at this particular moment in <laughs> time, we don't see an emergency. Okay. Clearly, from how you're speaking, you don't see it as such a big deal for well, the members to support another person from another party. Well, one um, of the reasons it, is a, it is a big deal. That I've said, it is a big deal because it is, even, it is because one of those things. Pre, there is one of those things which are provided for in law that if a member of parliament does, they can lose their position. But you're not pursuing it. We're it has happened that you're not pursuing it, and you're saying you're it giving is, time. It has happened. We're not pursuing it because we have not pursued it up to this point. I may say that now that we're not going to pursue, and then tomorrow the neck is called, and the party decides otherwise. Okay. My position is to articulate the position of the party, not the Rafael. They position. actually refer to him as the handshake candidate. Do you think there's such a thing, handshake candidate?
Well, politicians are very creative. They could even uh, call him the comeback kid or the, in the inheriting candidate because it was uh, his <laughs> <laughs> taking over from his brother if he wins. Yeah. And uh, uh, Mariga could be called uh, the star candidate because he's a football <laughs> star. I mean, politicians are free to come up with any... Uh, I'm sure you've heard, and there were murmurs from some quarters in ODM uh, saying that it was wrong in the spirit of the handshake to fill the candidate in what is viewed as Honorable Odinga's stronghold. One of the things that I've stated just when we started, and I can say that again, is that, you know, the reason for the handshake was to deal with something which was a lot more serious, and it has helped us do that. Um, I was talking, say, for example, with the Minister for Health today. Mm -hmm. At this particular moment in time, we have a challenge, for example, in terms of um, malnutrition amongst our children. 1.8 1. 1. million of them are facing uh, stunted growth because of malnutrition. Um, we have uh, challenges in this country in terms of food security. In fact, uh, according to some of the latest uh, statistics we have, uh, Kenyans generally pay more for their food than any other country in the region. For example, one bag of maize is 1,700 shillings in, in Uganda, and it mm. is 3,400 here. Mm. Uh, that's why we are concerned with the food security issues. But somehow, instead of putting us to account on those issues, so that then 1.8 million of our children should not be having stunted growth because of malnutrition. Instead of us spending time on that, which I think are very serious issues, um, somehow there's this um, infatuation with the politics to the extent that if you're in this country today, you think that the most important thing that we should be discussing is about Mariga and Okoth. <coughs> that really perplexes me. Of course, uh you are the Jubilee Party Secretary General. There's a reason why you came for the interview. And yes. We have different, we have different programs that deal yes. with different things. Yes. And it's a very specific show. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not yeah. blaming you. I think this is, uh, this is, uh, is, yeah. is, is not just the media. It is our General. society as, yeah. as a whole. I mean, so, uh, we, we, have a, we have some other fundamental problems that we should No doubt about that. Yeah, no doubt about that. Whether you're talking about the church, the media, the, the universities, we have problems, especially in terms of, uh, uh, of us pro putting uh, our priorities right. Okay, so again, the reason why I asked why there are mamas in ODM, because there was a letter from you in, on Friday, uh, January 18th, 2019. And when you said, I'll quote you, uh, after wide consultations, the Jubilee party leadership has decided the party shall not be filled in candidates for the forthcoming parliamentary by-elections in Ugenya and Abakasi South constituencies. Why? You said, this is in the spirit of furthering steps of constructive engagements with the other main parties engaged in the contest and with an eye on the bigger picture. So, so soon after a very divisive electoral period just a year ago, the party is acting in the best interest of various initiatives that will reduce political tension in the country. Just wonder how and why Kibra was indifferent. That is actually well, the stronghold, or passive stronghold, of Honorable Ray Lodinga. You say that was in January? Yeah. It's 10 months later. A day is what a has long, changed? A day is a long time in politics. So yes, really so what changed? That's, that's what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, the one of the first things is that just as uh, um, we did consultations that time, we've done consultations this time. And I want to say that one of the positive things I've seen in the Kibra contest mm was recently when the campaign team, uh, campaign caravan of ODM, met with the campaign caravan of Jubilee. You know what happened? They were high-fiving, they were cheering at each other, they were clapping at each other. Can you imagine that happening in 2017? Mm -hmm. We've come a long way. So we have to, uh, you know, push the boundaries. And I think within that context, I think that's a fairly positive thing. And that is why you decided to... It's not why we decided. Sometimes you have to take chances. And I think when we took this chance, we are competitive. We did take the uh, Jubilee, took the neighboring Langata constituency, where it was uh, imagined, the conventional wisdom was that Jubilee could not win that seat. And so we are competitive in this one as well. We could win. But if we lose, we'll have tried. But, right. but the positive things I s I've seen so far is a situation in which Jubilee uh, teams can actually meet with ODM teams and they are laughing at each other, they are, they are playing with each other, and they, they are accepting each other. I think that's a positive thing for democracy in this country. All right, and we'll see how Kebra uh, pans out ultimately. Uh, a few months ago, 
But it has happened a few months ago. It happened a few months before those few months ago. Yes. And again, a few months before those <laughs> a few months ago. Yes. Uh, and, had, and, and let me just add this. We had, yeah. You should not be surprised yeah. if there's another by-election somewhere and we decide to do exactly what we did in January with respect to the other by-elections. I think that's the sovereign right of the party to decide on a case-by-case -case basis where they participate and they don't participate. Fair and enough. there's no contradiction in that. Fair enough. So the Taga Taga team, or so-called Taga Taga team, uh, demanded your exit from the party. And among the reasons was a leaked audio conversation, supposedly between you and Honorable Nyanja, uh, where you had no kind words, really, for the Deputy President. We haven't really heard you, or let me speak for myself, I haven't really heard you confirm or deny first that it was you, actually. Mm, the person I heard sounds like you completely, including the laugh. So was it you first in that uh, leaked conversation? Well, one of the things that, uh, thank God, you're a uh, journalist and, uh, and a producer, there's a program called, a software called Cakewalk that you can use, and I can use it to make you say the things that you didn't say. Mm -hmm. My voice, yes, it is. Yes. And I think that um, the, when you ask me a question about the Jubilee position now, mm. what I'll articulate to you is the Jubilee official position. When you follow me in my bathroom, in my private space, and you record what you may have had me speak in private, and you go and manipulate it using uh, cakewalk, I have no reasons at all to respond to that. But if you want to talk about the substance of Kiamba Church, then that is something I'm ready to talk about, and I'm very sensitive about it. And, because, and so are we all. Yes, because but it did happen. It should never happen in this country. And Hussein, maybe you're aware, I was personally uh, involved in the conflict in, uh, in, in Rwanda, where close to a million people died. I was a reporter at that time, and I reported it for the World Service of Radio Netherlands and for mm -hmm. Japan TV and for the BBC. And every so often, I've gone back to Rwanda to see what happened in that country. Okay. In fact, the last one was 25 years anniversary. I've been to those uh, graves where thousands and upon thousands of people, people are buried. And at a, on a personal level, I can tell you that uh, in the, in the post-election violence in 2008, two people were shot in my home because Kikuyus who were looking for shelter and were running away from uh, yeah. persecution ended up in my home. That okay. was the only safe place where they could be. So really, when somebody wants to talk about Kemba Church, I can talk about it. Sure. And I have no apologies to make. But still, I'm asking you, is that you? Was that you? It was my voice. It was your voice. But the manipulation of so, what I said, I don't want to get into that. So you are not talking about the Deputy President? Because you're saying it's your voice, that it was you, and the things you were saying. You see, if, if you take a conversation and edit it out of context, it could have been about the Deputy President, but it is not that I said specific things about the deputy president. And in this particular case, if somebody calls me and starts talking about something and he's recording it, all right, and all I've done is to laugh. <laughs> there are things you're saying, you're yes, leading him yes, on. Yeah, all and the we have the transcript. We can yes, that's okay. All, all, uh, all, all, all I've said is, uh, is quoted out of context. I don't think that I should you spend know, they, my they time. They actually see you as being the, the so-called the Tanga Tanga team. They are seeing you as being biased against the deputy president and they want you out because of that leaked audio. Uh, they also say you're working behind the scenes with uh, Honorable Rai Lodinga. Uh, they're also talking about what you said, uh, in, I think in January when you talked about uh, deputy president's ambitions for 2022. And you said you, you sympathize with people who are thinking about 2022. 2022. I can repeat that. that I can how do you repeat. respond to this? Uh, I can team, repeat. Yeah. Now, you see, this you don't seem to like him very much. Not really. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's not the issue. I think I've stated before that our relationship is cordial and respectful. And I think this is where people don't understand. The president over the weekend talked about um, his jubilee damu. But Kenya is more important than jubilee. And I think in this program, I've told you the same. I'm jubilee, but Kenya is more important than jubilee. What is Jubilee Damu? It is aspirational in many respects. And at this particular moment in time, the most important thing is that we want to bring the country together. Some of these members who do not think beyond 
the, their ethnic identity and their ethnic um, uh, attributes, so to speak, which are sometimes in conflict with the national interest, mm. they, 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 they therefore see me as Tuju the Luo, not Tuju the Kenyan. And that's why some people would say, I end the ODM. And that's ethnic profiling. I have no apologies to make whatsoever. And I can repeat here. Including for that conversation. Yes, I can repeat here. There is no automatic candidate for Jubilee Party for 2022. One has said he wants to vie. Well, yes, one has said. He's, anybody who says they want to vie, including yourself, if mm. you join Jubilee tomorrow mm. and you want to be a presidential candidate in 2022, you're welcome. And the person who has repeated this is the deputy president himself. He has said it and repeated it. You're not supporting him? My support for any member of the party it will depend on who it comes on the table. Okay. But I, you cannot tell me at this particular moment in time that this is the candidate for 2022, he's the deputy president, and you're either supporting him or you're not supporting him. I am the secretary general of the party, and I will be ready, if I'm still the secretary general that time, I'll be ready to receive all candidates, including yourself, if you join Jubilee and you want to run for president. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you'll be the secretary general. Uh, and that's why I said if. Remember, I said in, that, if. in that conversation, at some point you said, and I quote you, Unajua sitaki kujitokezea mpaka 2021. So I don't know what you meant by that. He'll be telling us after this spring. General of the Jubilee Party is our guest. Uh, on 14th July 2019, Honorable Tuju, the Deputy President tweeted, I'll quote him when he said, So our democracy is so liberal that the Secretary General of the ruling party, that is you, has become the chief strategist of the opposition. Majab. I don't know how this was resolved. Did well, you talk to him about it? Because no, this came from the uh, uh, Sunday Nation headline that day yes. that said Tuju's new role, the, the title Tuju's new role in Raila's inner circle. Yes. Well, um, I was very curious about where that came from. But I think that the, story. Yes, that's well. Mm -hmm. and, and, they and, quoted you, though. Yes. You're part of the story. And, and then, of course, yeah. um, the deputy president uh, was uh, asked about this. And I was very keen. And I listened <laughs> to his every word that mm -hmm. he dropped. Mm -hmm. And he said what he thought was in my jabu was that the media could come up with such a claim. So, but end of story. So, you, you, because you thought he was talking about the news as being not factual. Yes. So, what is your relationship with the prime, honor, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga? Things have changed, definitely, from Politica how it was previously. Politically, things after, have changed. Uh, we, after the handshake. Yes, we, we, we had uh, serious political differences with the, with the Prime Minister Raila Odinga. Before, yeah. Not personal differences. Mm -hmm. I'd like to repeat. Mm -hmm. His children are friends with my children. We are next door neighbors, not only in Nairobi, but in Bondo as well. Political differences, yes. Personal differences, zero. In fact, our relationship has been very cordial throughout all this time Then people thought that we were fighting. Um, at this particular moment in time, he's a partner in the BBI, which is one of the president's uh, initiatives with himself. It would be well, some, some actually, some pundits say actually, now you have two bosses. Well, it is... After it, the handshake. Yeah, yeah, but it would be <sighs> disingenuous to, to say that I'm supporting this president and not support an initiative as important as the BBI, mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. because of what I talked about, things like foreign direct investment, how this has affected the country's, uh, the, 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 the country's economy in terms of strength of our currency, in terms of uh, uh, comfort level for tourists to come into this country because they don't expect to meet demonstrations on the way from the airport and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, politically, we have no um, differences. Well, we, do, we don't have any tension in our political relationship. He mm. is the boss of ODM. I'm the Secretary General of Jubilee. But the kind of uh, political s tension that existed previously, and especially before the last general elections, I would say that those are not there. And actually, uh, some would see, and you've heard this before, people talking about your future, that this relationship uh, could be your way to go and vie for the governorship for Sierra County. Again, that is ethnic profiling. I've lived 90% of my life in Nairobi. Why, why aren't people talking about me being a possible Nairobi governor? What, what, what are the qualifications do I need to be Nairobi governor? Uh, that, uh, that, that, um, are you intending to vie for governor in Sierra? No, of course no, not. not at all. 
So how would you want to tell me what you meant when you said, when you're telling Nyanja on that uh, leaked phone conversation, or I assume it's a phone conversation, uh, when you said, Unajua sitaki kujitokeza mbaka 2021, what are you supposed to do in 2021? Well, at this particular moment in time, and uh, everybody knows that the elections will be 2022. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if any of us is serious about any political uh, uh, posts, then I think it is just good political manners to wait at least until 2021. I'll read a few texts here. Uh, one from uh, Honorable Kabando Wakabando, uh, who is saying, first, <laughs> Jubilee Party is dysfunctional. No PG, no grassroots officials. Sabotage of the party leader. That's the president, I assume. As ex-chairman of the Major of Political Strategy Committee, seeing Jubilee Party headed to major split uh, uh, before 2022, that's saying premature 2022. New Alliance says rainbow is in the offing, indispensable and inevitable. Interesting times in mid-2020. Again, he says, we all Kenyans the truth. Fact one, Jubilee Party is presently cacophonous and unyielding. The ship is leaking. The ship has capsized. Hakuna Jubilee Mashinani. And it's split into two factions. Tanga Tanga, DP versus Pro Uhuru, uh, Handshake. So no longer at his center cannot hold things fall apart. Well, one of the things I love about... It's a member of your party. Oh, yes. One of the things I love about this country is people's freedom of thought and of speech. So when I hear that kind of uh, comment, I'm particularly grateful that I'm in this country where people can say what they want to say, make the comments they want to make, and we respect those comments. I may disagree as far as I'm concerned, and as an insider... Jubilee is going to be bigger in 2022 than it ever was in 2017. There's another one on Twitter from Kipchumba Murkomen uh, who says uh, the bedroom is smoky. Long live the hustlers. What do you suppose he means? Is that um, Senator Murkomen? Yes. He's the best person to be asked that question. <laughs> I didn't expect you to answer me that question. <laughs> you wouldn't care to interpret that, would you? Well, I mean, he's a whole senator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will ask him at, at some point. So, I mean, what is the state of the uh, and, and health of the Jubilee Party right now with the uh, uh, Tanga Tanga, Kieleweke? Are we going to see at some point you trying to uh, resolve this mess? Because I was here with you. I think we had an interview here about four months ago when there were the same problems. Same concerns, people calling for meetings, people calling for parliamentary group meetings, and so on and so forth. No, Koka says, none has happened. It's like, what is happening does not worry you at all? Not at all. The dream is much bigger. The dream is Kenya. And the president articulated that recently. Jubilee is going to be bigger and better and spells more hope for this country than ever before. It's going to be so big, you'll be amazed. I happen to be in the kitchen, mm -hmm. so I know that. Mm -hmm. But of course, I can understand when those in the periphery are um, a little bit jittery. It's like a plane which has taken off, is up in the sky, there's a bit of turbulence. Some of the passengers may think this thing is going to drop. It's not dropping. Are you planning any meeting when you, of sorts to oh, yes. address these concerns? And when? Yes, we, we'll try. But sometimes um, when people are operating from the level of tribe, right, um, it is so low that sometimes you're not able to help them, you only sympathize with them. If people want to engage from an ideological standpoint, from an intellectual standpoint, uh, some of us are very ready to engage with them at any time. But when people want to say that, okay, fine, um, I'm this tribe, you are that tribe, and let's have this argument. I'm sorry, we don't have that time. Some of us don't have that time. We empathize, we sympathize, we know the conflict they're going through within the context of their ethnic uh, nationality vis-a-vis -vis the Kenyan nationality. They have those conflicts within themselves and okay. contradictions, and they're having challenges, and that is the uh, cognitive uh, dissonance I was talking about. <laughs> I wish them well. Honorable Tuju, always a pleasure uh, hosting you here. Thank you so much for your time. In the meantime, obviously, you're focused on Kibra. And now that you're not taking any action, anybody in Jubilee is free to support any other member of any of the party? No. Fine. <laughs> Fine. No, I didn't say that. Uh, the party rules are that you support Because I haven't candidate. seen you take any action. And yes. you're not planning to take any action any, uh, any soon. First of all, it's not Or reprimand anybody. 
first of all, it's not my responsibility to take disciplinary action. That is or reprimand as a SG. Yes, I've said it several times. We have our candidate. We support our candidate. Um, but um, just like I said, that um, we have several people with disciplinary issues. If you should see the letters that I've had, that I have in my office, complaining about Murkomen himself, complaining about Sudi, complaining about Kamanda, complaining about uh, uh, Shebesh and everybody else. If I was to spend my time dealing with that, I'll have no life. At this particular moment <laughs> in time, job. yeah, no, no, as the secretary general, I, yeah, I'm the secretary general of the yeah. party. But I, don't, I want to tell you, I will also happen to sit in the cabinet, and we do have some very serious problems. I mean, take for example just the level of poverty level in this country: 16 million people living at below poverty line. That is, with less than 200 shillings uh, a day. We have 1.8 million children under the age of five who are facing starvation stunted growth, 290,000 of them completely, uh, you know, distorted. And somehow somebody wants me to spend all my time about Tangatanga and Kieleweke, they're wasting our time. But you're, the, you're lucky enough to have both jobs, right? Yes. So I'm assuming you're supposed to handle both jobs. That's well, it is. I think we, sh we should keep our eyes focused on the ball. Okay. The issue of food security, the issue of manufacturing. We need manufacturing. Virtually every family has got those who are qualified, PhDs, master's degrees, diplomas and so forth, and they're jobless. Okay. So if you're going to spend all our time on these side shows, I think we'll be in 2022 and will not have done whatever we're supposed to be doing. All right. Honorable Rafael Tuju is a Secretary General uh, Jubilee Party, also a Cabinet Secretary. Thank you so much. Thank you. For making time for us uh, tonight on Newsnight. Can, can I ask you Yes, a sure, I sure. Mean, uh, I'm told you are living and uh, <laughs> uh, this place and maybe you, you could put some light on that. I mean, just in case Jubilee disintegrates, I could probably apply for your job. <laughs> Here. Yes. Why not? You're more <laughs> than not? welcome. <laughs> I, I've done it before. You're more than welcome. I could also apply for your job. Yeah, of course. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for making time. <laughs> thank you. Uh, for us tonight, keep texting us. Double two, double two, four, double two is our SMS uh, number on Twitter. Use the hashtag Newsnight.